All right, it's two o'clock. Let's get started. Uh, we probably are going to go uh, to the 2.45 time. We've got about 10, eight, 10 slides here. Uh, so, you know, another dozen equations to solve before we get to 10.3. Um, so, uh, ha get, you know, get your notebooks out again, get settled back in. Um, we're going to get uh, back into it. So, the next uh, example, solving what would be like two steps here, uh, we have the example um, two equals one fifth x plus three. But again, so as I look at this, there's a fraction that might be a turnoff, but I don't don't let that throw you off. Think to yourself, I want to isolate the variable, and here the variable happens to be x. That means I want to move. Um, things to the other side. I want to move the numbers to the other side. And so as I look, I have a plus three here. That's what's got to go. I need to get this x by itself. So it's already on the right side. Move everything else to the other side. Well, it shows plus three. So it makes sense that I would subtract three to both sides. And that gets rid of the three on the right side. Two minus three is minus one. And then I rewrite equals one-fifth x. So that's one of the steps. The second step is now I've got my letters on one side. I've got my numbers on the other. Now I just need to deal with how do I get x by itself? Well, it shows multiplication. So I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide by one-fifth, which I know dividing by a fraction means I multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply by 5. And when you, it gets a little hairy here. I have a little bit of room here to put the 5 right here. But if you don't, it's okay to put the 5 over 1 right there, knowing that it's going to cancel top and bottom, top and bottom, and leave you with the x. More importantly, I need to multiply this side times 5 over 1. And 5 over 1 is just 5. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. There's going to be a pattern here where we isolate the variable by moving everything to the other side and then we divide to finish. That's our kind of our, our process, okay? Excuse me. So on number 2, this equation, 2 equals 1 half a minus 7, I want to isolate the variable, isolate the a. That means I inspect and I notice I have this minus 7 on the same side as the a. It's got to go. I've got to move it to the other side. It shows minus 7. I undo it by adding 7. And that will get rid of it. And as long as I do it to both sides, I'm okay. 2 plus 7 is 9 equals 1 half a. The seven's no longer, the minus seven's no longer on this side. Again, it's multiplying times a. So I have to, if I'm multiplying times a, I need to, or sorry, if I'm multiplying by a half, I have to divide by a half, which means I multiply by two over one. So I can write times two over one right here, as long as I do the same on the right side. And remember, two over one is just two. That gets rid of everything that's touching a, it isolates a, equals 2 times 9 is 18. So a is 18. Again, we're just going to dress these things up like they're more and more complex, and maybe they are in some ways, but baby steps, small steps get us there every time. As long as we think we want to get that variable by itself, and to get there, we typically move things to the other side, and then we divide at the end. Here, we've got a lot more terms. 6x minus 4 equals 2x minus 8. We still want to isolate the variable x. Now, before, we moved everything to one side to get the x on the on by itself. The same thing happens here. You notice that you have x on both sides though. And so this is where students ask me, is, is there a right 
place to start, you started there. What if I started in a different spot? There is no right or wrong place to start here. We're going to maneuver these pieces around to get all X's on one side and numbers on the other. That is our goal, meaning I'm going to say I'm going to leave this 6X right here. So this minus 4 has got to go by adding 4 to both sides. What does that look like? Well, those go away, and I'm left with 6X equals 2X, and minus 8 plus 4 is minus 4. Do we have all the X's on one side yet? No. I have X's on both sides. Well, I can use these same rules to move numbers around, to move x's around. I want all the x's on the left side, so I'm going to move this 2x. This is a positive 2x. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. And 6x minus 2x is just 4x. That goes away, and I get 4x equals negative 4. So look at the maneuvering I've done. I move the numbers to the right. I move the x's to the left. I could also have started in a different spot. If I rewrite the problem, 6x minus 4 equals 2x minus 8, I could have moved the x's to the right by subtracting 6x. Those go away, and I get minus 4. 2 minus 6x is minus 4x, and I still have minus 8. Now my x's are on the right side. That means the numbers had better go the other way. And if I add 8, minus 8, I have to add 8 to both sides, and I get 4 equals negative 4x. Do they look like the same result? No. But when I finish the problem, when I divide, when I look at the first one, 4x equals negative 4, when I divide by 4 to get x by itself, and I divide negative 4 by 4, I get negative 1. When I look over here, I've got negative 4 times x, so I better divide by negative 4 to get x by itself. And when I divide 4 by negative 4, I get negative 1. And notice they are the exact same answer. And so what I'm telling you is, even though we end up with a lot of ingredients here, we get to the same result. As long as we're just moving things to both si on both sides in the same way, with the goal of getting our letters on one side, and the numbers on the other. There's no right or wrong place to start. We'll get to the same result as long as we're doing things correctly, meaning computations correctly, following the procedure correctly. All right? This one starts to become an issue for students because they think, oh, well, I have to do exactly what the teacher did. And if I don't, and then he did something different, then what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong, probably. Okay? You're typically not doing anything wrong. You get to decide where you start. Okay. Let's get a little bit more complex. Let's look at the example 7 plus 3 equals 2, parentheses, P minus 3. Now, we're introducing something here that was in the B1 appendix that I didn't spend a lot of time on, and that's called the distributive property. And there's an assumption that you guys have experienced the distributive property enough that this isn't too wild for you. Meaning, if I have something like a number 3 times the parentheses a plus 2, I distribute this through. This is 3 times a plus 2. So it's 3 times a equals 3a. And it's 3 times positive 2, which is plus 6. That's the distributive property. We distribute this through our parentheses because we can't combine a plus 2. That's just, there's, no, there's nothing we can do. It's just a plus 2. But we can multiply a times 3, and we can multiply 2 times 3 and get 3a plus 6. That's what we're going to do here. And it's going to make sense for us to do this right up front before we get too far into the problem. So as I look at 7 plus 3 equals 2 parentheses p minus 3, I think 7 plus 3, that's a weird way of saying 10. 7 plus 3 is just 10, right? Why rewrite 7 plus 3? We know 7 plus 3 is 10. Equals 
Now I'm going to distribute. 2 times p is 2p. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. And now we've got a basic two-step problem. We know we want to isolate this p right here. So this minus 6 has got to go to the other side. How do we move minus 6 over? We do the opposite and add 6 to both sides. 10 plus 6 is 16 equals 2p. 2 times p means I divide by 2, whatever's touching the p, and we get p equals 8. We're just dressing up these problems in different ways to make it seem like they're more complex, even though they aren't necessarily. There's not a whole lot going on here. It just looks, it just lo appears to be a lot more going on. All right. Let's try this one. 2.2y minus 8.3 equals 6.2y plus 12.1. First thing I'd say is don't let decimals ruin your life. Okay, don't let these decimals throw you off. We have a calculator. We can add decimals, subtract decimals, multiply decimals, and divide decimals. Just fine with a calculator. So don't let these things throw you off. As I look at this problem, if I don't let decimals throw me off, I notice that I have y's on the left and y's on the right. I get to decide which side I want them on. I'm going to move them to the right. I'm going to move this 2.2y over here. Why am I going to do that? Well, I have years of experience that tell me sometimes I like to keep my variable positive, and if 2.2 is subtracted from 6.2, this stays positive. If I move 6.2 over here, it's going to be negative. And we just and it's just a little bit more comforting to keep these positive. Is it wrong if I don't? Absolutely not. Just do something. Move something and you'll make progress. So, to move the 2.2 over, I have to subtract 2.2y minus 2.2y. That gets rid of it over here and I'm left with -8.3 equals, now I can get my calculator out. Don't let these decimals throw you off. What's 6.2 minus 2.2? It's 4. 4y. Don't lose that variable. 6.2y minus 2.2y is 4y, and I still have the 12 plus 12.1. Now my letters are on the right. That means my numbers had better go to the left. So this 12.1 had better get thrown over here. It shows plus 12.1, so I subtract 12.1 to get rid of it. As long as I do it to both sides, we're okay. Don't let the decimals throw you off here. Don't let them ruin your life. Minus 8.3 is just 8.3, and I make it negative. Minus 12.1 is negative 20.4 equals 4y. Decimals aren't hard with a calculator, I know that, okay? Now I've got my numbers on the left, I've got my letters on the right, 4 times y, I'd better divide by 4 to get the y by itself. Better divide by 4 to get the y by itself. So negative 20.4, I might have to type in 20.4 and make it negative, negative 20.4, and then I divide it by 4 and we get negative 5.1. Do I care that my answer is a decimal? No. It's the correct answer. There was nothing about decimals here that changed any of the rules. It's the same old rules, same old song and dance. I just maybe needed a calculator to help get me through the decimals. Okay. All right, now we've got a big uh, kind of sentence, uh, kind of a, a lot of stuff going on here. 
So I'm going to write it down as you write it down. We have 2 plus 7x minus 5 equals 6 parentheses x plus 3 plus 2x. And I always go back and make sure I wrote it correctly because a lot of times students do correct things, correct, correct work, and we realize later, oh, you wrote down it. You wrote it down wrong. Okay? That's always a big hurdle. Make sure, always double check before you put your time into it. Make sure you've written the problem correctly. Okay? The first thing we're going to do is make this simpler. We can't jump into moving the x's to one side and the numbers to the other because there's too much going on. So I'm just going to look at the left side, and the left side is 2 plus 7x minus 5, and I notice 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5 is just negative 3. So they have 2 minus 5, that's just negative 3, and then the 7x stays, plus 7x stays. So 2 plus 7x minus 5 is really just minus 3 plus 7x. You could also write this as 7x minus 3, and you'd be just fine. These are the same thing. 7x minus 3 is the same as minus 3 plus 7x. As I look to the right side, i got to make this simpler. I'm going to distribute. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 3 is 18. And I bring down that plus 2x. I know the left-hand side, minus 3 plus 7x, is already simplified. 6x plus 18 plus 2x, I notice I have 6x and 2x. Those combined to 8x. 6 plus 2 is 8 of them. So I got 8x plus 18. And now we're back to our idea of, now we're back to something more similar to get, uh, both sides are simplified, so now I can go ahead and Move the x's to one side, numbers to the other. So to move my x's, I'm going to move this 7x over. It shows plus 7x, so I'm going to subtract 7x. So now I have minus 3, that goes away, equals 8 minus 7 is 1x. You can write 1x or you can just write x, and then plus 18. Now my letters are on the right side, so my numbers, they better go to the other side. I better move this plus 18 over here. It shows plus 18, I do the opposite, and I subtract 18. That gets rid of it over here, and I get x equals, I'll get my calculator out, minus 3 minus 18, so I write 3, and I make it negative, minus 18, and I get negative 21. All right, let's add more and more stuff. So let's go ahead and write down this example seven. This is nine minus parentheses z minus three parentheses plus four z equals four z minus five parentheses z plus two minus six. You'll notice that I write my z's with a line through them because otherwise they look like my two, okay? If you write a 2 like that, you might be okay not doing that. But I do that just to, just to make sure we know we're talking about a Z. I'll also write my T's with a little hook underneath so it doesn't look like a plus sign. Okay? And I'll also write my J's. Oops. I'll also write my J's with a little hook so they look like J's and not, I don't know what else people would do, but maybe, they, I guess I, sorry, I's I also write with a little hook an I with a dot, so it, you don't want that. That looks like a one, so an I. So that's how I would deal with Zs. You don't have to. Do what you want. But I just do it for organization. You'll probably see it throughout as you go into more and more math. You'll start seeing that more and more often. So we got a lot of stuff going on. We got parentheses. First thing I want to do is get rid of some of these parentheses. So this 9 minus, can't do anything with the 9 yet. But the minus is like a minus 1. There is an invisible 1 there, 
So if I distribute this, it's really minus 1 times z is minus 1z. And it's minus 1 times minus 3, which is plus 3. And if I were going to tell you where students who make a mistake on this problem, where that mistake is, it's right here. They write this as minus 3 when it's plus 3. Okay, so just a heads up, that's where I've seen students make most of their mistakes on this. I rewrite plus 4z. I rewrite this 4z, and now I'm going to distribute minus 5 times z, which is minus 5z, and minus 5 times 2, which is minus 10. And again, this is where students might make a mistake. Negative times a positive is a negative. And then we have minus 6 at the end. So I've gotten rid of parentheses. Things are a little bit more simple. But now I've got a lot of stuff going on. i got to start combining some like terms. So I look here, and I've got 9 plus 3 is 12. I've got minus 1z plus 4z is plus 3z. Maybe you read it 4z minus z is 3z. That's OK, too. Bring down my equal sign. 4z minus 5z is minus 1z, and minus 10 minus 6 is minus 16. Now this is much simpler. Now I look to, okay, there's nothing like that I can combine on the left. There's nothing like I combine on the right, but I can combine on the right. So now I have to start moving things around. I'm going to move this minus z over here by adding z to both sides. And that gets rid of it right there. 12 stays. 3z plus z is 4z. And we have minus 16 on the right. So I've got my letters on the left. I better make my numbers on the right. So this 12 is on the left. My letters are on the left. So I better move the 12 over by subtracting it, subtracting 12 to both sides. And I get 4z equals minus 16 minus 12. I can get my calculator minus, whoops, so I have to do 16 and make it minus. Minus 12 is minus 28. And divide by 4. And z equals negative 7. OK? Now it's possible you need to go back and work through these things. It's possible you need to come back to this video and work through these things. It's because, you know, I'm going through them. Um, and I'm hoping you're able to keep up and make sense of it. But uh, it might take you more time to have this stuff sink in uh, and it be more concrete for you. And I'd encourage you to go back and look at these things uh, and make sure you're ready to move forward. Um, because, you know, they can seem, there's a lot going on here. We went from very basic one step all the way to this, OK? It's a lot of stuff. And um, we need you to be successful at this moving forward. So make sure you're putting in the time. If you haven't yet this semester, make sure you're putting in the time to, um, uh, to be as successful as you need to be, OK? Um, a couple of things, a couple of notes here at the end. We have three different outcomes for an equation. And I would write down conditional equations in your notes. Don't write all these words. We'll get to the lay terms, but conditional equations. An equation that is true for some values of the variable but false for others is called a conditional. The equation x plus 4 equals 6, for example, is true if x equals 2. But if for others, it's false. And what so this means, conditional equations means 1. Uh, um, let me say it this way. Let me say exact solutions. OK? And they can be one or many, can be one or more. but they are specific. So here, with x plus 4 equals 6, we know the answer is 2. 1, 
solution. But sometimes we do run into equations that have more than one solution, but they're specific. For instance, the solution set might be 3 and negative 3. That's still conditional. There is more than one, but they are specific, meaning there's not an infinite amount. There's not an uncountable amount. There's a very specific amount of solutions. Okay? So conditional equations have exact solutions, uh, can have one or more, but they are specific. Compare that to contradictions. Some equations have no solution, such as x plus 1 equals x plus 2. Okay, so contradictions have no solution. The notation that you might use for no solution is a circle with a line through it. And the example that they give, at the end, they get 1 equals 2. This is no solution. If your result, after doing all the math, and you get to something that looks like it doesn't make sense, like 1 does not equal 2, So, but you get this. This is no solution, and you would use the circle with the line through it. Okay? No solution. And then the last type of uh, result is to have what's called identity. Um, and this just means infinite solutions. There's an infinite number of infinite number of solutions we can put in, and uh, you would answer with uh, the answer is the set of real numbers. And the example that they give, you do all the work and you get 4 equals 4. And while that's true, it's not a solution. You get to 4 equals 4. The answer is not 4. The result is it doesn't matter what I put in for x. If I put 1 in, I get 1 plus 4 equals 1 plus 4. Yeah, that's true. If I put 10 in, 10 plus 4 equals 10 plus 4. Yeah, that's true. If I put 1,000 in, 1,000 plus 4 equals 1,000. Yeah. This anything I put in is a solution. There is an infinite number of solutions. Okay. And when we get into graphing some of these things, we'll see what they look like on a graph. And it's very, it, it lines up with this idea of number one, having accountable ex exact solutions, number two, having no solution, and number three, having an infinite number of solutions. There's a very, uh, it, the visual graphs that we get really line up with these and kind of solidify our understanding of what, what those things are. Okay? All right. So that's 10 2. Um, let's stop here. I think I've given you enough for today. We got, you know,